honestly, that that's scary enough just watching that through the screen. Mm -hmm. And for, it is honestly, it is. <laughs> and and for Chris, you not only do that, you also do off road. Yes. So maybe how can we join in, and how is you know tarmac and off road that different for you? And which do you enjoy more? Well, um, first I'll start with how to join. It it's always starts with training. You invest the most in training and proper gear before you even decide what kind of a bike you want to buy because you might go to the shop, choose a bike, and once you've trained, then you realize it's not the kind of bike I wanted, it's not for the purpose that I wanted it for. So you first um, invest in proper training, professional training. And um, in Kenya right now, we have many trainers, both for road. Um, we do for the off-road part of it. And... Um, the gear. Gear is very important. The helmet, boots, pants, jackets, all that is really important too. So you also get to invest in that and do lot of, a, a lot of uh, research before you, you get to invest in that. And then with that, you can go ahead and buy a bike after the training mm -hmm. and having proper gear. Okay. Yeah. And um, you asked uh, which, I pre which one I prefer most. Or oh, which is more... I don't say risky because Jeff is already giving me a side <laughs> down. So uh, let's see, which, which one do you enjoy more? Well, personally, I enjoy off-road more. Because is, it, is it more competitive or it's just more fun than tarmac? Um, for me, it's because it gets me, as a traveler, it gets me to some of off the beaten track places mm -hmm. um, in Kenya and in countries uh, beyond. Um, where you get to meet, like, um, you get to go to the real country, meet the real people out there who, you know, I mean, not bring <laughs> water, I don't know how to say it. Yeah, yeah but you, you get to meet the real people, you get to see beautiful landscapes, untouched places, wildlife, and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what I prefer, but I cannot avoid being on the road, mm -hmm. because for commutes or some of the adventure rides, you need to be on the road, and also for the charity rides, you can't choose a school and decide, okay, I'm going to go yeah. off-road when you can take the road. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Now, Omoyo, I understand that it's done on a club. You guys have clubs, uh, respective clubs and whatnot. Uh, but then again, how popular is, you know, how, how often are people picking up, you know, riding in the country at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> <So that. Yeah. laughs> I would say we've seen the numbers grow. When I started riding, that's back in 2015, we were not the numbers we are today. Mm -hmm. I remember, I think, the entire women community of riders would just be probably 50 or less. Mm -hmm. But now we are over 100 and counting. I'm privileged to meet a lot of people because of my story. I get a lot of inboxes uh, on request. I would like to join. How do I do it? And I'm always glad to guide them into the right training schools. And then after they, they finish their training and qualify, I'm able to connect them with the various groups. And then you can choose where you fit in well. Mm -hmm. Because riding is, is not just taking a bike and sitting on it. Mm -hmm. There's much more that comes with it. There's knowing the kind of riding you want to do. So for someone who likes off-road, I wouldn't be able to give them to, to connect them with people who prefer street riding. I'll definitely guide them towards the people who prefer, who do a lot of off-road. That's where they'll have most of their fun. Okay. But as a community, we are one. Okay. Mm, yeah. Now, Lucy, as we were talking about the where women riders world relays, something stood out. Why is it only women participating? <laughs> and uh, you're all women here, so... Yeah, so uh, maybe I think it, it goes back to uh, the person who started it. It was started by a, a lady. And at times I think um, uh, we need something. You know how like we get together in a salon to just talk? We need something that gels us together. So all of us happen to have bikes, and we mm -hmm. all happen to like each other, and then we all happen to like being on the road. So um, for that concept, yes. But I don't think it's secluded to only women. I think gents can also come along. Um, um, you, they can always um, check out the website for more information or reach out to us. The website yeah. is? World Women Women Riders World Relay. World yes. Relay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, Fonjeri, uh, who doesn't compete, as, <laughs> <laughs> as fondly mentioned, uh, do you think we can get to a point whereby we have 
you know, like a championship where but like the likes of Safari Rally came, you know, and the, and the rally in the country, the World Rally Championship. Are we getting to a point whereby this will become competitive? Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Um, like I said, there are groups that actually race. And they've done open road racing, which has been, which has not worked well because it's very dangerous for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. But then they have gotten uh, closed spaces where they ride. They are small spaces, but it's a start. But there are people who come into riding with the intention of racing. And they have raced and they are getting, the numbers are growing, the support is growing, the bike, the bike uh, community that races is also growing. And that's why I mentioned earlier that there was a group that actually went to South Africa to represent Kenya. So is it something that will grow? I think it is growing and it's, we're yet to see how big that will be. Okay, now as we wind up, so maybe a parting shot to the viewers from Mitch and every one of you, let's start from that end. Great, um, I think for us as, 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 as bikers, mm -hmm. why women ride, why I got into riding and why I mentor in schools is because I want every girl, every woman to get out of their comfort space or what society has molded us into. And let us just go out and do what we want, what we're passionate about, what we're afraid we can do, but we wouldn't do because of what society will say. Just go out and ride and have fun. Just get on a bike, go, ride. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, for, uh, from me, I think the most important one is road safety. Um, uh, please look twice or even thrice before you change lanes, before you cross a road, before you, 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 you make any change or, or do any sudden action on the road that would put other road users at, at, um, at risk. And this is not only for, for people who drive, like drivers, we, we need this from bikers, we need this from cyclists, we need this from pedestrians. Everyone needs to look at uh, other road users and make sure that they're not endangering other road users while using the road. Okay. Yeah. I think being able to travel out there and see the world and meet other women that do motorcycle and have the support right from home, endless support from these girls and many girls that are out there watching this show right now is a blessing to me and for that reason I will travel more and travel to speak about the women who ride motorcycles, I mm -hmm. uh, will travel to preach this, the, the goodness of the women of Kenya. And I am here to ride with the same team that supports me every day. Um, and the greatest support that I have received coming back and saying that we are doing the Women Riders World really here and seeing even the men join us and say we'll support you. Um, companies come on board and support us. That, that, that's, for me, that is quite inspiring. Mm -hmm. Yes, and mm -hmm. I would just say, continue supporting everyone who rides motorcycles. Mm -hmm. Of course. Now, lastly, uh, Grace. Yeah. Party short. Um, well, what I would say is for us, riding and joining the WRWR ride um, is to break the stereotypes of women can do, women can do this, they shouldn't do, they should do that. So this is to encourage all the women out there to be adventurous, be inspiring to other women. Uh, be courageous, be all those things that people don't want you to be. You can be who you want to be and you can succeed in it. Okay. Njiri Mwangi, Lucy Munyenye, Omoyo Kariuki, and Grace. That was quite impressive, uh, the mm -hmm. whole story. And here at Channel One, we do hope that in your future endeavors, you actually are going you know, to achieve what you are out to set. And I forgot to ask this. 18 countries and counting, Momoe, which is the next country? Where do we pick up from? From February, we enter Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Yes, we enter Costa Rica and we go all the way up, Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, all the way to Mexico. And we hope to be in the U.S. in May 2020 and hopefully do it all the way to Alaska. Okay. Yeah. Now, all the best in that. And we shall be mm -hmm. keeping tabs and, well, updating all the fans and viewers out there. Well, for all those who joined us for Channel One Weekend, thank you very much. And for all those who sent uh, their feedback via SMS line 20154, you can always uh, send your feedback or any other, let's say, opinions on the news and whatnot on Twitter at KBC Channel One, same as Facebook, KBC Channel One. My Twitter handle is it Munga underscore Mbatia. Our sign language interpreter has been Steve Dunde. 
Thank you for your company. Stay tuned in to more news on KBC Channel 1. And you can also do that via our website. That is www.kbc.co.ke. Well, that's it for me, Richard Munga. Enjoy the rest of your viewing and happy holidays.